in the case of Perforce, this is on a server, so it's on a, it's on the cloud. So every change I've made to uh, the game has gone and been uh, like um, has been stored. So here we have the Xbox UI change list and version tags. Is that's the change that I had here. And at any point, I can go I can go right up to this version and say, let's let's go back, let's roll back to the old version. Uh, yeah. So. Let me check here. So, uh, so yeah. So the um, using something like Perforce, you can use another software will allow you to do version control. And every time you make a change, you can always revert it and go back. And you never lose anything. You never get to a point where everything's broken and you can't go back. Uh, so that's one of the nice things. And Unreal has a really a uh, really nice way of doing uh, uh, source control within the engine. So if I go here, usually you have a, a little section uh, for uh, asset management. To, just because um, I, I don't want to leave you guys with like uh, uh, without the, the the knowledge of how to do this, I'm going to open up the uh, the space boat uh, uh, setup that uh, that I have. This is using 4.26, so I'll know where the button is. I'm sure it's, uh, I'm just not seeing it with their new UI. All right, so up here you see it says source control. And you can just basically go through, it's almost like just putting in your credentials for, uh, for going into an asset. So for example, here I have uh, an asset. Um, uh, so you just, sorry, uh, the credentials to your Perforce uh, server and all that stuff is what I meant to say. Uh, so here I'm going to look at this asset, and you'll see you even have source control here directly, and you can you can do stuff like check its history and so on. So you can see this specific object or or file that's in my uh, in, inside the game will will have its own history, and I can go back to any one point in that uh, that object's history. And this is very important. This is uh, you you need to get your source control under uh, under control, or what you end up doing is copying your folder for your entire project over and over again every time you you make changes and that can get that can get pretty big whereas the source control can uh, just stores the difference it knows what's different from that version and this version and then just stores that difference so in the end it's storing everything over and over again but at least it's only storing what changed not everything uh, at once and it's much easier to to do um difference uh, in change lists uh, checks and so on i know it's boring but it, you're going to save yourself a headache if you just start looking into source source control, and you can do that through a number of free things like like Git and uh, or or Perforce or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, so yeah, maybe I might do another video at some point talking about source control a little bit. So yeah, so while while I'm in here, this is uh, version 4.26. Uh, so we can see the difference. Like this is the this is the folder where I have all my assets for. Um, for the game and you can see that I've already color-coded some of things uh, I've named things in a specific folder and so on uh, so for example uh, Domino has all of our animations here here's a <laughs> actually here's something really funny um, I'll just bring this over how I was doing the testing for a Domino with the bigger head I changed the shader so she's kind of puffier and then all I do for for checking is like oh, hang on. There you go. She has the bobble head, uh, and then for her hands, people were saying they they want the hands to be bigger. Uh, so I can go into let's say the the right hand and just uh, scale it over here, just numerically. Oh, that's way too big. Let's try. Uh, there you go. There we go. Hand is there. Let's go to the other hand. That was the the right hand. Let me go to the left hand. And remember, I'm just doing things quickly. Just to test stuff out, so I'm taking the the, the base, the the base rig for for Domino, and just making a few changes here and there, uh, just to see. It, like rapid prototyping is a is a way of life for game development. You have to be able to do uh, changes quickly to get an idea before you settle in by making the large, expensive changes to your assets. So in the case of what I'm doing here, it's easy enough uh, to to make these changes. But once I'm I'm good and I know which numbers I'm actually going to be using 
for the final one, then I go and change the asset so that it's properly uh, prop properly authored and so on. But in the meantime, I can get a, a really quick view of it and get people's um, like uh, they just want to know what they think, their opinions. It's like let's see what they think, and sure enough, there was thanks to that we were able to get uh, some other opinions. For example, this is all things related to her her skin. So if I double click this. Now I have this material, which is her fur. Uh, these little uh, these little spheres are what we call like the shader ball. Uh, so it gives you a sense of what it, um, like every material that's on her. So for example, uh, here's one. This is the RCNP uh, sign on the side of her arm. Uh, and I've got uh, I've got options here. So let's say I'm gonna pop her uh, pop this character out. Go to the, oh, I decided to go over here. All right, so let's just do this real quick. She, she's giving us a little boop on the nose. All right, so if I go like this, and now I've got the, the assets over here. And I'm just gonna grab that over here as well. And let's say I grab her armor as well. I try to make space for it. Hang on a second. Um, I can do stuff like uh, base color. So I can change her color dynamically because I put something in the shader that allows me to change her color very easily. So let's see uh, if I do something like this. So we can make her more orangey for her armor. Anyways, you get the idea with um, uh, with with shaders, you can change material attributes and so on if you expose them. I'll, I'll go through some of those in that uh, test uh, uh, map that we're, we're, we're currently running. Um, and I'll show you how to do stuff like uh, set a trigger that does something uh, in the other one. So the idea here is when when you're in Unreal, you can see all of these, um, uh, all these uh, variables um, and you can modify them if you've exposed them in the shader and you've got some information here that sometimes is overlooked but it's quite important like the number of shaders that uh, uh, like the um, uh, for example how many how many instructions are in the base pass um, that's actually useful if you have too many could mean that it takes too long to render so here you can see for for this particular thing for her armor and I can change the shape of the shader ball if I don't want it to be a shader ball I can make it a shader cube for example and we get to see what her materials are on a cube yeah yeah once you've created your model uh, and you've created what we call a UV a UV is basically saying uh, if I'm using a texture this part of the texture will be the uh, like the the breastplate thing or the chest plate uh, plate um, so once you've done your UVs and you've created your textures and you've done all that work and you created your models and you brought it into Unreal, from that point on, everything is cookie dough. You can mold it into any shape you want. And, uh, and it's easy to adjust these shaders. The shaders are very similar to how I'm doing the programming. Uh, it's all visual. So for example, if I look at this material in particular, it's using the, the, the parent material. So it's kind of like a, think of it like a structure. So this is the child uh, material at the end. But the material that it's based on is something called basic substance. Now substance is a software. Uh, substance, it was, it was independent but it got purchased by Adobe. Uh, but it's a software on its own that allows you to do paint basically onto 3D models. And then once it's done it, it converts it into a, a simple texture. So I have a shader that specifically reads uh, the substance painter uh, setup. Uh, and then converts that into a material uh, instantly um, in Unreal. So if I look at the the base material here, if I double click it, uh, don't be afraid, there's gonna be a lot of little lines. This is the material um, at its core of, of what we saw. So we have a, a something called a color map. So if we can like, and that's the texture that we created uh, uh, before. And then we can do all kinds of things. There's all, I know it's math, but it's, it's a thing. Uh, I just uh, gotta use it. Uh, here's the normal map, and it's plugged into the, the normal materials. So uh, I've actually reopened um, 
this is the space boat uh, project, but I started a new project in Unreal 5, just to, just to see how it works. And um, I'm, in fact, I'm going to leave the uh, uh, like what we were doing here, so we can go back to uh, our project in uh, Unreal 5. Uh, so it, basically, this is a bare bones project that Unreal has given us, and we already have uh, our game up and running thanks to Unreal. It did all the heavy lifting. It's 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 already given us a third person to play with, uh, with its uh, character. Now here's something that uh, remember I was uh, for for those of you that were uh, there at the beginning, I was talking on for quite uh, I talked quite a bit about the marketplace. So uh, to give you an idea, and this is this is why it's important. Um, I've seen I forget which MMO they were trying to sell, where the main character was actually this character here. You got to see the game with this, and it was a full, a full scan. Uh, and it was big. Uh, I forget what it was called. Uh, um, but uh, it was an MMO that got a lot of money through Kickstarter. And people gave a lot of money and all they did was take uh, stuff from the marketplace. And the default character from here. And they got something like $80,000 or $90,000 um, uh, from the Kickstarter. And uh, it was a big scandal because it was all just, just default stuff. So it's... Usually, um, when someone uses too many marketplace assets or the default asset, usually that's a sign that uh, this is not a legitimate game. So you want to make sure that little by little you replace basically everything.